Are we live? Are we live? Okay. Okay. Uh, happy Saturday. It's another new week of um, our regular or weekly podcasts. I would say it has become something like that we are very consistent with right now. And um, every week we try to come up with like topics that are very real and something that is really um, touching different aspects of mostly singlehood and sometimes we talk about a bit a bit of marriage and um, it's very interesting uh, the topics we've been discussing lately I really enjoyed <laughs> uh, a few of them that we've talked about and um, today especially this week the flavor of the <laughs> group was about uh, accommodation everybody was talking about accommodation and we decided that probably is a proper topic we are going to address this week right and I want you to buckle up because <laughs> today is going to be a bit turbulent because uh, we are going to dive into different areas that uh, uh, covers the topic of accommodation we're going to look at biblical references we're going to look at um, even the, the, the general perception of people especially in this our current generation both from the point of view of single people and from the point of view of married people and joining with me today my name is david by the way if you don't know yet um <coughs> I'm, I'm part of the admin team and joining with me we have um you know the regular faces i'm not going to introduce them but i have some serious um new faces i'll say uh, i have uh bro femi with us he's joining in uh and he's going to give his own side of um the nuggets he has um we have also our prayer warrior brother yami um so we know him already and of course some of us like <laughs> our dear brother obina um real talk so with no further ado let me just open the floor for everyone to just probably if they want to say one or two things before we delve in to this topic okay good morning everyone i'm happy to see everyone um uh you are all welcome to this topic on accommodations let's see how the wave is going to take us and don't forget to share right now start to share on your pages let's get more people coming here and let's talk about this let's see your comments i'm going to be looking at my phone okay i'm waiting to check all your comments so that uh we can answer your questions live as they come um so go for it let's listen to Rafemi. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm also happy to to be here, and I'm extremely privileged to be in your midst. Just like you've introduced um, the topic, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit controversial. You know, mm -hmm. the topic is very controversial. But let's see how it goes. Uh, we are going to be practical and marriage, so we are going to be sharing life experience. You know, before during and of course um after marriage yeah thank you okay you're muted uh, for you. okay we can't hear no you. i'm not muted okay go ahead yeah okay for me i wrote about the topic uh, and i'm interested in this topic because i feel it's very important and most importantly because a sister in the Deeper Life Bible Church, uh, came on and asked the general superintendent, that's Pastor W.F. Kumui, a very crucial question. And when you listen to that question that has been shared all over social media on YouTube, you understand uh, 
where sisters are when it comes to this issue of marriage. And we're just talking about one side today, and that's accommodation. As a married person, I understood the sister very clearly what she was trying to say. And I think that is a very important topic, something that we really need to talk about. We need to be open about, and we need to really make it real, talk about it. Now, this, uh, as we all know, is the Dipala Bible Church Singles, and it's a global net, it's a global platform. So we're not talking about only accommodation when it has to do with one particular location or one continent, but accommodation, we should look at it from various continents. Whether you're in America, you are in Europe, you are in Asia. I cannot talk about Asia as such because I've never lived in Asia, but at least we have someone in our midst that has some level of Asian or, you know, in the Middle East that can talk about that. And we have some people on this today that are from the Americas, so in, in, Amer in, on, in the continent, you know, Northern America, from Canada, they will talk about it from their own perspective too. But this is a very important topic. And I think that we really need to take this serious. Um, and talk about it with an open mind and be ready to, to learn. For me, I think that the Deeper Life Bible Church singles should be a group where people come to really learn and unlearn. And you must yeah. be open-minded to be able to get to, because you want your marriage to work. You want your marriage to work. You must be open-minded to listen, to learn, to unlearn, and then to to, 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 to ask the Lord, okay, what is, what is the Lord saying about this matter? We are Christians. What is the Lord saying about this matter? But well, we want to really to keep it real. Because after marriage, after marriage, after you're married, whatever you find, whatever you discover, it's all left to you. No pastor, nobody's going to be able to help you out. They can only counsel you. But you cannot be put asunder. So that's from my own point of view. And um, I would like us to discuss very openly and to be very practical and so that all those on this group will learn. And that's my own objective, that people come on this group and they learn, they all learn and they really prepare for these tax of marriage. I'll hand over to Brother Yemish. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to this special program today. Uh, I really thank God that we are all here and we are from different parts of the world. We have different uh, people that have even crossed uh, continental individuals in this place that have lived in like three continents of the world. And they can speak from the perspectives of those different continents. But be that as it may, I think it is important for every one of us to know that uh, even God Almighty from the beginning, before he, he created Adam, he had made the world very well. You understand the world was created and everything was good. So he created man as the last of his creatures. And by the time he, he, the man was settled in that, make, may I call it accommodation, that's the Garden of Eden. And he was already fine. Then he brought in the woman and they were enjoying their accommodation, so to say. So, uh, that's to say that even right from the beginning, right from the beginning, God Almighty has made it to be that accommodation should be part of the process of the marriage or the home that it should be set up. So I believe we are going to have a nice time. I believe that we are all going to uh, have your, you may have your own perspective, you may have your own mindset about the thing, but as we discuss, I will want every one of us to come to it. A, a, a balance of our thoughts and to understand that as as married people or singles getting to marry, we should see it as that accommodation is very important in the marriage process. It can cause a lot of things. It can cause joy, it can cause happiness, just like other factors in the home. So we are not going to look at it that oh, what is accommodation? Is that is, is that is should, that should be the least of anyone's concern. No, in reality it's not the least of anyone's concern. Because 
Eve, imagine that uh, maybe Eve, by the time Eve was coming, it was given to Adam. Eve did not have a place to live or he was not living in a comfortable, she was not living in a comfortable place. Maybe some other things would have played out. So the comfort should be there as well as the good accommodation. So as we discussed today, I believe we're all going to have a nice time. We're going to be uh, enjoying ourselves and we're going to take home some lessons from this topic. Thank you, everyone. Have a listening. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I guess introductory remarks. My, I will just put it out there. So anyone listening, even my fellow uh, uh, contributors, I guess my own point of view will be coming from what I've read in, in the Bible and what I, I have seen what play out in the lives of people either I have lived with or I grew up watching the good and the bad. I guess that's where my own uh, view will be coming from. Okay, thank you. All right, very nice. Um, so we've all um, give a piece of what we, we want to talk about today. So I just want us to just go straight into it. Um, can we just start by talking a bit about what does the Bible say about accommodation? Where can we find it in the Bible where it says that it is a requirement for, for marriage to, um, to get accommodation ready? And what type of accommodation is appropriate <laughs> for uh for you to have before you consider even looking at the uh the aspect of marriage anyone can jump you know I, i'm just trying to warm up the the floor first because i have i have a, a lot of areas i want to delve into <laughs> For me, I think that accommodation is accommodation should be comfortable, and that when um, a man is planning to get married, even even as a Christian, it should take along the person that you are interested to get married to, and that she should be aware about where you are taking her to. She, come, she should be comfortable with where you are taking her to. Okay, but uh, can I can I can I object to that? I just want to give the other side of it. I'm thinking about the uh, Abraham story while you are talking. You know, when Abraham sent his servant and they went to get uh, a wife for Isaac, Rebecca, right? Yeah. Uh, when the servant arrived there, uh, the proposal from what I can remember from the story, it didn't include saying that, okay, you need to come and check out whether <laughs> Isaac has a place where you can uh, get Rebecca in and all of that. She just believed that, oh, if this guy is having a servant that came all the way to, you know, all of that, right? So, the reason why I'm saying this, I'm trying to relate it to our current uh, state of, of uh, courtship, right? Um, some people are of the opinion that why, why does the sister have to investigate the brother's place? Isaac, they didn't investigate him, right? <laughs> so why should you investigate uh, but the brothers, but yeah. the servant kind of did a preamble, like he kind of introduced him, said, My servant, my boss, let's use the normal term that we know, my master or my boss in the in the term of today, is he has this, he's established. I mean, I'm I was even looking for the passage. He he he, he did a preamble, he kind of introduced, like, come where I'm taking you to, it's a very good place. He has set to the land. He is this, he is that, and his son, who is the only heir, has come to look for your daughter. He sold, he sold the market now. And and but my, 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 my rebuttal, I, I agree with you. 
but understand this brothers in the church always tell sisters hey i'm coming from this i'm coming from that I have this, I have that. What's the difference between the servant saying the same to Rebecca? He had That's a lot of comments now. Did he not come with a lot of comments? Oh, okay. Brother in the church can borrow a, uh, a Benz. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a four. <laughs> it's, like, saying, it's terrible. <laughs> Camel, is a, Camel was a means of transportation, right? Okay, but that now, guy was not lying, okay? Yes, if, you yes, say, yes. If, if you say, I came with my Benz, and it's not your bench that is becoming a lie. I'm only saying for a, a sister that doesn't know everything about this brother, right? Yes. You know, you can only you can only be sure of yourself. You can't be sure of whoever you are dealing with, right? And Isaac, Rebecca didn't see Isaac. She only heard about him. Really? She didn't even know how <laughs> right? to meet. Okay. So I guess we'll be to see Okay. I think uh, for me, the way I look, can you hear me? The way I look at it yes. is, if I want to, if I want to um, address the example uh, uh, that David was given, remember, these people were related, so they were relatives, although distant relatives anyway. Okay. So of course, Rebecca's family knew about Abraham. Already, that, that's number one. Number two, I guess in that culture, when that kind of um, group when they go in that kind of quest there, there is some kind of how i put it untold verification beforehand it's not as if the servants will go there and be making up stuff so that's by the side now when we want to relate it to i guess our current day what what i have to say is this again this is like i said i said before we started i'm going to look at it from principles the way i look at it is this Sister Princess said something, oh, the man has to sell the gift. I agree. But I guess the question is this. When we are talking about, um, and Madame Deborah mentioned comfort, my, the way I look at it is this. What kind of comfort? Because you said the real talk. The real talk is this. Many of us in, in the professing church today, we take our values from the world, consciously or, consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Now, now, of course, I'm not saying, oh, just go and suffer. No, no. Even if you have to accept that proposal and go and suffer, you must know what you're getting into. Meaning, I was discussing with a uh, princess, I think, last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And in the, discussion, in the discussion, I told her something like, a woman that is in touch or has kind of accepted proposal in the process of accepting the proposal, should come into that proposal prayerfully as an investigator, in a sense, in a way, because you have to ask that man questions. Because as a woman, uh, I, I heard one woman say, when a woman accepts marriage, what she's essentially saying is, God, it's your hand, I commit my spirit. So before she takes that step, she must ask, God, what's your vision? Where are you taking it? What do you have on ground? At least she has to know, okay, this is what I'm getting myself into. Because this question of accommodation, when we look at um, many of these great men of God that we've heard of, some of them are still alive, some of them are late, many of them, they started with money, but they had to give up that money. Because of the ministry, some did not start with money. They did not even have any to start with. So different situations, but they had a vision, they had a calling where they are heading to. So mm -hmm. my own take, my own take on it is, what is the goal? If, if the goal of accommodation is let's eat, let's drink, eat, and be married tomorrow, we die. Mm -hmm. That's a different discussion. If the goal of accommodation is okay, how can we build and get to our God ordained calling or God assigned calling? That's again different. Mm -hmm. So I guess it depends on what the goal is. That's, that's my all right. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. From my, from my own hand, uh, looking at the what played out in the story of Abraham's servant and all of that, uh, I think we should not forget the fact that that uh, servant was very sure of what he was, you know, saying. He wasn't telling a lie and all that. So 
I like uh, bro David jokingly re referenced that one of you five a brother or took a borrowed defense and said that this might be just like the servant took you know the camel and brought it. You know, anyone that could do that, I mean that could tell lie, uh, is not even the side of God in the very beginning. So, but I think these days there are ways of verifying things that was not available that time. You understand? It was not possible for you to verify a lot of things. Abraham was living in Canaan land, but they were living in Haran. They were two worlds apart. I, I, I know that then they were not two different continents, but they were probably two different countries. I think they should be in the Middle East even then. So, but they were far apart. And there was no means of trying to verify, trying to research and to get. So they basically believed what was happening, what he said, because even at that time, people could come to you and tell you things and you were going to believe. He played out also when uh, Jacob went to also look for a wife. What he said, he just believed it. They weren't thinking that, oh, maybe he came to scam us, he came to keep this girl into marriage and all. He said, I'm the son of Rebecca. And they believed that it was Rebecca's son. They didn't doubt him. So the level of trust that time. So even if someone else had gone to look for another, he would have probably most, most likely said who he was or who she was. Sorry, who he was. Uh, not necessarily telling like, but you know, these days, uh, civilization and all of that, people can tell lie and people can deceive. So that was what I think that played out in that case. So I, I want to also emphasize that no one should, you know, deceive anyone because of our accommodation. So accommodation is, is something that we may not find it in the Bible that thou shalt have accommodation when thou wants to marry. But uh, from references that we can pick up in the Bible, you can see that accommodation is very, very important. Well, probably we are going to still talk about how comfortable the accommodation should be or what kind of accommodation should be. Maybe then I'll reserve this thing I want to say to that point. But I know that uh, very, very importantly, no one should deceive any other person just to make the person believe and to come into that marriage. And just like uh, I think Robina or someone said, that anyone that wants to go into the marriage will also do his own background research. And this, this is very, very easy to do. Nobody should be able to deceive somebody. Uh, if it's character-wise, you may be able to deceive, but not in terms of accommodation. But someone that could borrow a car could also borrow an accommodation to just showcase to the sister. <laughs> but it's very easy to detect that. Very, very easy to detect that. So it was character-wise, which we are not talking about today, that might be difficult, but not issue of accommodation. I don't think okay. any lady out there would be deceived on the issue of accommodation. No, <laughs> Brian, it, 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 it is possible, but we'll get to it. All right. I, I have a very strong question we are going to follow up and discuss after bro um yeah me Femi. bro Femi goes. So uh bro Femi go. Okay, uh, all right. Um thank you, bro David. I think um some of the controversial issues in marriage they ought not to be subject of discussion but it is because the trust has been breached we've lost it when it comes to trust we are in the church we don't even know who is who because you you are you want to get married and i'm sure it is not a day affairs You've gone to the universities, you need to work for some time, you need to get yourself prepared. So it's not an accidental thing. It's not as if you just woke up overnight and then somebody just pushed you into marriage. It's something that needs you, you need proper planning. And the planning takes years. So it is not just one year or two years. And I'm sure as we go on, I'm going to be giving us some uh, very terrible instances right in the church just because some of the sisters are, you know, deceived, so to say, 
uh, because, you know, the kind of the church where we are, don't follow them, you know, let their holiness um, gap, holiness distance and the rest of them. But at the end of the day, um, it's just like somebody who said, you know, I planted um, 200 heaps of yam. Whereas they planted 100, at the end of the day, when you finish eating that 100, you eat the remaining 100 if that is empty. So what I'm saying in a nutshell is that if you deceive anyone, probably you have a predetermined notion. I want to get this sister by all means. You know, instead of you to open up, I'm from a very humble background. This is what I have. If she's willing to accept your consent i'm sure she will so we don't need to sugar coats and paint what is not at the end of the day if she finds out i am telling you she will hate even the man the more yes she might not divorce she might because we are christians but at the end of the day she would look at the husband as a deceiver you deceived me into this marriage well, some may say ah, the sister is materialistic or is this or is that. But I do tell people, let us swing the pendulum. You become the sister, let the sister become the brother. Or you have a daughter and somebody deceived her. Of course, if it were children that were well brought up or from, you know, a well-to-do family and, and all in the name of marriage, you change, you know, the direction of the life of that sister, would you be happy? The answer is no. So we just, uh, class, there is class in marriage. So go for your class so that all can be fulfilled and be happy in that marriage. Don't deceive anyone. Let us be transparent. If transparency was there, I'm sure we'll not be having this kind of discussion today. But the trust in the church has gone. So we just pray that um, we'll find, we'll retrace our steps. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And... Um... There are so many things that I want to go right into because both of you have said, in fact, everybody has said something that just touched some nerves. And um, I just want to start with the fact that uh, we said, we, a lot of us have been talking about verification, verification, verification. Now, there are so many different scenarios. Marriage is complicated for different, different people. And there are so many different scenarios. For example, I want to give a very common example that is happening right now. Everybody is jackpine, 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 right? And you find out that <laughs> brother has jackpa, but brother wants to get married. And he doesn't want to get married in UK or US or Canada. He still wants sister, you know, sister in uh, whatever, right? Back home. <laughs> back home the back home could be anywhere now and um the thing is he needed to marry how does he do verification how does the sister do verification in terms of the sister the, the brother's um uh, state of uh, well-being right now pro probably abroad because let's be real not everybody abroad is comfortable right there are some people they are still squatting with 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 other families and they still want to get married if you get married where are you going to put your wife <laughs> right so i just want to talk specifics how do you verify a brother that is abroad he has jackpot he's still trying to get his feet right and um I, i'm sorry to say not all brothers are very honest about their situation a lot of people just exaggerate their situation right yeah. uh for, for just to be, i'm just trying to be mild about what i'm saying <laughs> or no. if i'm really going to be blank and and, and factual some brother will, will will actually come out with a bloody lie like they, they will paint a very rosy picture for the sister but well, sister, you're going to come abroad, you're going to enjoy, you know, snow, all these things. Sweet life. But well, sister will come there and be jumping from, I've seen it happen live in the UK. She'll be jumping from people's houses to people's houses. Married woman, no? Jesus. You know? So how do we verify? Let, let's go with, I want bro Yemi to start. Because he mentioned... It's very easy to verify. Can you give us some tips on how a sister can verify? All right. 
Now, well, going by the, the structure of the church, and uh, I know that it is absolutely impossible, except if people are going through the back yeah, the back door, which some people do. But going by the structure of the church, uh, the brother by the structure of the church is not supposed to contact the sister or to propose to the sister behind the church structure, which is the marriage committee. And uh, uh, I may not be able to say specifically what plays out in Europe and in the Americas or probably maybe in Australia as well as uh, Asia. But in most African countries, I know that there's this structure of the church that the church is also involved in checking out the brother's accommodation. So now, since the person most likely will be called, let's leave out the people that are having backdoor, uh, 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 backdoor stuff. Maybe the sister contacted the brother and they are, or the brother contacting the sister and they are doing their things by themselves. But if it is from the marriage committee of that country back to the own country or the other country, so I believe the marriage committee that is involved will also have some of their very key uh, stand on what and what they expect to be the minimum standard. Maybe, for example, is the brother really born again? They will want to know. Uh -huh. Is the brother really, really, uh, uh, maybe uh, serious with spiritual things? They will want to know. In fact, there was a time in the church I think now I'm not very sure, but I, I had some time ago that it's not as serious as that. Unless you're a worker, I mean, active in the work of God, you may not even have that opportunity. But nowadays, I don't know if that still works. So they will have some of this yardstick that they will stand on and they're going to be, you know, tell people. So is that brother sending this request or you are presenting to come and marry a daughter or a a, a a lady from us is even against the active, then I know accommodation will also be one of the issues because back okay, there in okay, their sir. own setting too. So, so I, I just want us to be a bit um, uh, wild about this uh, scenario. For example, I'll give you a very typical example that this, this um, method you are saying will not work. It's okay. a good method though, but it would not work. For example, in Dubai, Let's say Dubai. When before Dubai had deeper life, there was no deeper life, right? For example, there was no deeper life. There was no way of saying, okay, I'm going to call the pastor there to verify this brother. Nothing like that. Right? But there are so there were so many deeper life members over there, right? So in that case, in that scenario, how do you verify? Okay. Well, maybe the time you spoke about this thing, there was no proper structure. But now I can tell you authoritatively that in some of these countries, I think I'm not sure if Dubai is now one of them, but I'm sure it's either Dubai has a present Dubai life, uh, maybe pastor, but if not, Dubai has most now. of these countries what? are poor. Okay, but most of these countries that Dubai has have, now. They, have on, they have online presence and they have people that have been able to form a kind of uh, congregation, so they may not be oh. having, you know, yes, a place but where Yemi, they regularly. It's structures, but Brother Yemi, in some, in some nations, they don't, the, the person that is leading that church does not have that kind of authority. He does not have that kind of authority to check on brothers. He can no, I'm not, not saying you should check on brothers. brothers. What no, I'm saying no. is that there are people you can contact that can help you to find out a few things that will help this sister that is that you want to you know you want to release. You cannot just leave the sister out there like that. You as a pastor or you as even a father. I'm talking. I'm not talking of the lady's father. Maybe a father figure should be able to have some people uh, because these are critical. We all know. For example, if I am in that position, I'm just giving. I know the importance of marriage. We have been involved in marriage stuff, so you know what is going on. And someone abroad. We are, who, who probably I don't even know, or probably maybe I know, and I don't know his state, and I, I am not doubting him, but I know there's a possibility of exaggeration and really little, you know, addition to what is the present condition. So I will try as much as possible to make contact, especially through that uh, maybe body, that like I say, online presence or something that 
oh, we heard of this person, can you help me to do a little for this? It might not be as practical as a structured, or the, uh, structured church will be, but at least to make some sense, to give this sister a soft landing. So we have to be pragmatic and practical about it. We cannot just assume. So we are, we are all in it together. Well, I don't want my name to be mentioned as so, well, and uh, you know, the people that contacted me and all of that. You understand? So I will try as much as possible to do the little diligence search that I can do. So I know it might be difficult. I mean, it might be hard, but at least it's not going to be that we just, oh, someone has come from abroad. Oh, what a nice life you are going to have. Well, anyway, just keeping in this. So somehow, you know, the, 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 the level of us, Poverty in quotes now will make anybody that even goes abroad to believe that no matter what I face over there, to a last agent extent, I might be I might be way better <laughs> over there than I am back home. You understand? But however, that is not it true. Happens. no, however, some people have that mindset. I'm telling you, you are not you are not living back here again. But I'm telling you what is the truth of here because so. But the diligent search as much as possible will be that we cannot throw our ladies into the hands of people that were not very sure. We will try as much as possible to make this diligence search as much as we can. Okay. It might not be effective, it might not be 100%, okay. but we'll try and do something about it. So for me, this is how I, I think I will, I will Handle advise, it, okay? I'll advise the sister because <laughs> to be honest, there are some places around the world where some people work you cannot find a contact there that you can call and say, oh, can you verify for me? You cannot. It's not, no, not everybody has that level of network, right? Oh. So me, if, if, it's, if it's my cousin or my friend that is trying to get married to a brother that is living in some place and he has painted this lovely <laughs> uh, picture of this place, me, I will say, get yourself a holiday and go check out the area <laughs> right take a holiday take a break go and visit the place check it out get to know what is happening around there right so that you can see with your two eyes not that somebody is telling you and then tomorrow you'll be blaming oh this person say go there i heard that is good or i heard that is so comfortable over there no get yourself a ticket and get there that's Sorry. that's for me what if she doesn't have the means to go what if she doesn't have the means and yes <laughs> and, this yeah. thing yeah. that you're just a lot of people a lot of people <laughs> even today when i call them and i tell them <laughs> go check out that person that you see you trust what is telling you they are not ready to they, they, they don't want to they feel it's a they feel that the money they are going to pay to get into that country to check him out or to check her out is a lot, and they don't understand that. That's a lifetime money contract. Pay. It's a after, lifetime contract. After you have signed I mean, that marriage contract, you, you, you are in. You are in I'm, for it. I'm sorry. It's a lifetime contract. There is no money that is too big to spend to go and find out what contract you are signing in for the rest of your life i'm sorry if you cannot do that then you're not serious about your marriage ah uh, no you can't, you can't really blame Some people don't have the means the means is not really there i know uh probably maybe broad penny and Brovina can maybe make some uh, contribution to this if the means is not really there i'm telling you okay maybe someone says is in maybe, maybe for example america or canada the americas mm -hmm. now to to get the process of visa alone for visit can take you months yeah yeah it can take you months and even the process alone the process of getting the you are going to spend i mean hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands and uh, some You're people, right. if you know their salary salary per month in this own country here you will know that it's an investment that they dare not mention at home to their family will tell them that instead of you to go oh. for that adventure <laughs> I was I was I, I was talking about it. the brother sponsoring it. I'm not talking oh, about the sister all going. All right, <laughs> you are not talking. <laughs> you are not talking. No, I mean, bro, I mean, to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, in this kind of discussions, despite what people uh, call me, I try to tread lightly. 
I've had experience with this uh, someone that got married and I'll hit it on different angles. I'll hit it from the church angle and I'll hit it from the normal human being angle. Because we are speaking to believers, we are assuming we are speaking to believers. From the church angle, there's nothing new under the sun, but most church structure we have today, it can help 50%. Let me put it like that. If I'm going to give you a number, 50%, that will help you get to verify this kind of stuff. Hmm. The reason I say so is this. Because someone mentioned it before. If we were meant to be, our word to a leader should be enough verification. You get what I'm trying to say now? But because we are not what we ought to be. And sadly, again, I'm treading lightly here. Many people in positions of authority do not necessarily understand the weight of their authority. It is spiritual authority. They treat it like secular authority, like their workplace. No, no, no. So we have many of these issues. But let me just, like, like I said, I'm going to tread lightly. I'm going to hammer on the non bisecular aspect of it. What one experience I had was someone I knew, how like it, it's a complicated word. Someone knew me from school. You know? hmm. So this person was working with a staff member whose daughter is about to get married to someone whom I know. Hmm. You understand that kind of word? Now, this person asked me, what can I say about this person? I told the person, people that know me know who I am. If you are good, I'll say you are good. If you are bad, I'll say you are bad. I don't care. I told the person my, <laughs> my own take on the person. Eventually, they are married. But what I'm trying to say is that even the Bible tells us in uh, Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are good, whatever even as Christians, we should not throw wisdom under the bus and say, oh, we're in church. No, 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 no. Even in church, there are vessels of honor, vessels of to dishonor. So, yes, what I'm saying this thing is this. Yes, some people say, oh, you are not married. I have heard and have seen some things. Yes, I don't know. I've heard and I see some things that if someone had prophesied to me before I heard it, that that thing happened in church, I would say no. But I've heard and I've seen it. So, in the case of the lady, the lady should go and find, this is my own take, am I wrong? The lady should go and find her own herself a trusted counselor, or if, if possible, counselors. They could be old mamas, old papas that have experience and will give her wisdom. Apart from, I know some people, apart from whatever structure their church has in terms of maybe marriage committee or whatever. Because this issue of verification, like uh, the previous people have said, I think it could be true. What's come to us, let the advisors or somebody raise money. They can hire private investigators to check into that guy's situation. Yes, it's course, very serious. It's very serious. It's very serious. Why, I, why I'm saying it is this. Yes, we are in church, we are believers. But not everybody, not every brother will be sincere and genuine to say it like they're as it is. Sister Princess will be any witness. When in some of our discussions get together with the ladies in the fellowship, I say my mind, but the ladies hate it. But I'm saying if for example, if someone comes to ask, let's say I'm trying to propose to live, and someone comes to ask, Oh bro, where are you living? What's your situation? I say this is my situation. I'm not interested in deceiving anybody, but most men people are like that. Because the same ladies will say, you know, ah, look at that proposal, it was like this, it was like that. Remember what I said when I started? Often, we are the architects of our problems. Many ladies, will take, many of us will take our values from the world. Instead of looking at what's important, yes, of course, some people will say accommodation is important. It is true. But again, if you really look at it, both parties are at fault. Not the, the, the parties in discussion now. Generally speaking, ladies want a rosy picture, isn't it? The proposal and everything. 
men don't want to be all the ladies. So we are in this whole mess we are in. But do you know the funny thing? This is also happening in church, which it should not be happening, is it? So that's my that's my contribution. Okay, bro, Amy. Rafemi, Rafemi, sorry. All right, so I think um, it's a very sensitive area. You know, when we, you know, talked about validating most of the claims um, from the brother, but I think it's worth it. I'll give you a typical example. You know, um, I heard of a sister that wants to get married. You know, the brother went proposed to her. The father-in-law, though he's in Nigeria anyway, you know, he, the father-in-law went to the sister's village to ask about the family. It's not even about accommodation. The father wants to know how is the family, you know, uh, how is the background. They just want to, you know, so the man did not go there himself. He had to hire somebody from the church. Then uh, they met one other person in that village and they went to to the family house you know to make some interrogations at least to know more about the family so uh, just like brad david alluded to i don't think there is nothing that you do whether monetarily spiritually to sort out some of these controversial issues um, in married is too too much um like the other speaker said if the need be you can get an independent uh, investigator. You understand? Maybe somebody that is staying in that country. Just tell the person, I want to know more about this person. Just find out where he stays, his lifestyle. Because it's tricky. Because even just like Brother David um, suggested that his sister should visit. Yes, the brother know you are coming. He can decide to go and stay with another brother. And that accommodation is not ease. So he would have painted it, ah, this is my community. And, and the sister will come after one week. She returns back to to her country. So he has succeeded in deceiving her completely 100%. And she comes over to the country and she gets um, disappointed. So it's a little bit tricky. But what just what I would say is that aside from investigating, I think... In this case, we need to also put our spiritual eyes because those things that are hidden, it's only God that can reveal it. I tell you, I kid you not. Even I've seen some persons that went to marriage committee, did this, this, but there were lots of things that were hidden. So I, I still want to believe that um, God can still reveal the sacred things. That's, I believe, 100%. So... Um, yes, humanly speaking, we need to do our parts. We need to do those background checks. But I still want to believe they are not. It's not enough. Uh, it's not enough. We need to still be a little bit spiritual. We can ask our spiritual fathers, please help me to pray about it. Is this person real? Is it fake? Because it's a very dangerous thing to fall into the hands of a fake brother. Because it's just accommodation we are talking about. If you can lie about accommodation, then you can lie about every other thing. So it's just it's just one thing that we are discussing. So it's something that we need to, you know, go a little bit spiritual. Yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you so much for that. I just want to acknowledge all the people that are joining from different places in the world. Uh, we have some people joining in from all the way Zambia. Wow, you're welcome, uh, Roms. And we have favor and we have joy. I think joy is from Ghana. Wow. This shows that this is like a, a really international group. So, um, I want to talk a bit more. I think we've, we've sister, talked. Uh, I think sister, sister, sister. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sister Debbie, you wanted to say something? No, me. No. I wanted to say something. And oh, so okay. I I wanted to, I agree with what uh, Femi said about praying because God is the greater investigator. <laughs> because sometimes, and it, it boils down to how the kind of relationship that we build with God. As sisters or brothers, most times this accommodation thing hits sis, br sisters more. So sisters always believe that as I heard somebody said, oh, I was so much in poverty that 
I was so happy when the man just came to propose to me. <laughs> and so they feel that marriage is a kind of get away from whatever situation they are into. And that's why I always tell sisters that it's good to build on your own self so that you're not married. You're not getting married to think that you are getting out of your predicament into a better place just to find yourself in a worse place than where you are. Right. So first building your own self and then building your own spiritual life. Because there are th God still speaks to, to his children. Take it or leave it. God speaks to his children. There are many times that God will get to tell you as a woman things about this man, even before you get married to him. And if God can start telling you, if you don't hear from God before you get married, how will you hear from God after you get married? How will you know things? There are times I'll be lying on my bed and I will get to know things, <laughs> things that, that is happening in my husband's family. And I'll wake up and say, I had this dream, your cousin, this, 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 and that, and like, oh yeah, that's really happening. It might not be clear, but I will just hear things. Like I will just wake up and see things. It will be so clear that sometimes I will wake up and I might even be crying or maybe be upset or talking out, you know, and be like, whoa, 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 why are you mentioning this person's name? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't think about them, but this is what I saw, right? And it depends on how God speaks to you. If you don't know how God speaks to you, you would know things. I got married to someone that lives in another country. I was living in France. He was living in Germany. Just like what David was saying. It could be anything. But I had prayed about it. And I was sure that God was telling me to go this direction. So it's not just when you are so desperate. It's easy for you to fall into any net and any trap. So forget about your age. Forget about your, your condition and all that. Pray to God and let God lead you. And stop looking at, I want to marry a man that is in America. I want to marry a man that is in wherever, whatever country. Because we're so focused on this jackpot in that you just want to marry a man with a certain pedigree. And men are seeing that, oh Lord, they won't marry me. In this Then they want to clean up. What does it take to clean up? Clean up, get a beautiful background. Whenever I'm talking to you, I put a very nice uh, background and then I clean up nice and I talk nice and I try to twist my accent and make it look. And then when I, every picture I take on Facebook, I go to the nicest of places and I take the picture on cruises. Before the cruise go, please, let me just take a quick picture. Eh? Just quick. And then I'm posting that and you're like, wow, I just got a big fish. And that's the problem. When we are carnal, if you are carnal, minded, you will get whatever you want. This is just the truth. Let's just be factual here. Forget about you. You and many, problem, many reasons why many ladies fall into trap is because they are competing with others. My friend got married to somebody in America. Like one of my friends came to me. Hey, please now help me to get somebody that is abroad. Please, I want somebody that is abroad to marry me. She refused to accept the ones that are around her. And some of the brothers she said no to eventually are going abroad. A couple of years down the road. You don't know what he is today. You don't know what it's going to become tomorrow. This can twist in either ways because some people will say, okay, then the, <coughs> the brothers that are not ready to work and get ready for marriage will hide under that this carpet now and say, hey, tell them that my, my situation will change. But you're not doing anything to change your situation. It's only faith, faith, faith. I believe, I know my future is great and you become a motivational speaker. What are you doing to make your motivational speech become a reality? He's sitting there in his sister's house. He's not doing anything. He's not learning any course. He's not trying to become better. He's not, he's not trying to apply to any course to say, okay, if I'm going to take you abroad, let me study. Let me try to... Up. They don't want to read. They're not even ready to get a scholarship. Scholarship is hard to get, eh? My friends, you people want to go abroad, but you don't know that. Robin, I can tell now. Before you get a scholarship, you will work hard. You will write many, many proposals before somebody will take you. But many lazy brothers or lazy sisters are not ready to look for, to do the job. To seek for an admission, to make, okay, if you had a third class, you can do well and go and do a master's at University of Lagos, University of Ibadan, and get a better grade than the third class you got. So that when you apply for your scholarship, you say, okay, there was a time I had a third class, but now I had a master's and I had a distinction. And for that reason, I can do a PhD in so and so a department, but they're not ready to do that. You are broke. You don't have money to travel the regular way. You cannot travel as a businessman. You don't have the money. You can all use your brain. Okay, if, if, if my money is not there, I can use my brain to get me to where I'm going. You're not ready to do that one. 
You are not ready to do minor job. You are not even ready to sell on the road. You are not ready to do it. You are waiting for white collar job. Even the bankers are not rich anymore. Mm. <laughs> they are not rich. Oh. They are just wearing white shirts. I'm sorry to say. Some of them, uh -huh. the pay is not even as good as teachers. If a teacher is smart and he has other courses here and there, other personal uh, students here and there, he's richer than that banker that you're looking at. Many of them, they're driving borrowed cars. They lend them mm. money from the bank that they're going to pay for the next 10 years and be attached to the bank. And they're driving that sweet car that you're seeing. It's not his money, it's credit. Then sisters are there. Yes, my sister, the other sister, her marriage was lit. Me too. I must, mm -hmm. I must, I must. Then you refuse the brother that went to Polytechnic that is already uh, developing mm -hmm. machinery, that is already doing, that has a vision. Mm -hmm. A man of vision, you know, eh? Except if your head, there is a hole in your head. If you have, you know what you are looking for and you talk to a man of vision, you know, you see value, you know value. You talk to him, he knows where he's do going. He knows what he's doing to get to where he's going. But look, if you this are gullible, and that's why they fall into wrong, wrong hands. So I have a friend that did her investigation. She's here in Canada. She got married to a brother, the guy that lives in, a brother, he was not from our church, bro, but a guy that lives in Nigeria. I mean, at the time he was living in Dubai, but you know how Dubai is. So he kind of moved back to Nigeria. What did she do? She got a private, when I asked her, I said, hmm, this thing you are doing, uh, I hope it's not one chance. She said, no, don't worry. I got a private investigator. Without his knowledge, I, my friend told me, I paid the guy. Well, he went to investigate their village. He found out pictures. Mm. He, he got names. For me to know that the investigator was doing the job, I asked him, what is the name of his brother? Of course, I've, I, she has discussed with the guy. Oh, how many siblings do you have? I have this number of siblings. What's your mother's name? Uh, this is her name. Oh, this is my sibling. One of my siblings live here. She, she was talking with him at the same time, getting the information and confirming with the investigator to make sure. She's not telling the investi investigator, oh, did you see his brother called Mark? No. How many siblings does he have? Have you found out? Yeah, they said his school here. I asked people in the community. They said this, they said that. Okay, can you give me a picture of where he, his family lives? Oh, this is the picture. Okay, what about him? Oh, they say he lives in Dubai, that he comes and goes. Okay, find out some things about him. She made her investigation. She paid her money. Her money did the job. If you don't have the money, you can get friends that live in that city and make your inquiries. But the number one thing, if God does not, if you have a check, your Spirit is telling you, mm, something is fishy. Mm. Something is fishy. There is no smoke without fire. There is no smoke without fire. Trust me. So that's my only to take on this. So let's not ignore this God thing. God is the ultimate investigator. He will tell you things. In the relationship with God, God will tell you things that wow. it might hurt you, but that's the truth. Forget about how packaged the brother is. Packaging does not mean anything. Forget it. Some of us have married brothers that didn't look very packy. Ah, my sister saw my husband when he first came to France now. She herself, she's like, ah, oh, oh, this is a broad brother now. Wow, this is true. You get that? No, I did not say anything. <laughs> you did not say anything about his shoe. You didn't say anything about his shoe. About his, about his shoe. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know? uh, so, uh, but it doesn't mean every man can be cleaned. As long as the man has a yes, that's a and he's yeah, going yeah, somewhere. Wait, that wait. was my thing. My sister that said, "You see this brother that doesn't care about his brother, brother sister. the way he looks. You will if clean you him up. Him, if you touch him, you become a takeaway. You are real ugly. That now, man, as you become yes. a takeaway, a takeaway. Please, please, please. We are changing <laughs> the topic now. <laughs> <laughs> Changing the topic now. So, uh, you, you touched on a lot of things, and I just want you to read something because now it is very, very, very rampant and common for sisters to always aim for a brother that is over there, over there, over there. Listen, not everybody needs to marry a brother that is living abroad or. 500 company right not everybody you're not going to be happy marrying it's not everybody that's going to be happy marrying a top brother right okay so the main thing is does the brother has the basics wherever he is is he in nigeria is he in ghana is he in south africa does he have the basics can he marry you and you have a place where both of you can grow together like because 
a lot of people get blessed. A lot of brothers get blessed once they have their helpmates with them. Doors, some doors just start opening. I've seen it happen. I've seen some brothers that struggling so hard. They've tried everything. They are not lazy. They tried everything, but it doesn't work. But once they got married, things just started turning around all of a sudden, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> bro, we can <laughs> confirm that. So, you see, sometimes, sisters, you shouldn't just be focused on, oh, can you give me that type of house that is on uh, Pinterest? Because Pinterest has a lot of nice houses, right? Uh, and you have been pinning a lot of houses. You've been pinning the colors. You've been pinning the... Um, the window, how is oh, it going yes. to match? <laughs> <laughs> how everything is going to match? You have already planned everything. You are telling your, your friends, huh, you know, I'm going for this brother. This brother is going to, you know, all of those things, they are nice. But at the end of the day, you might be in a very big house, but you'll be very miserable. Those things will not add to your happiness. What you need to do is just get the bare minimum verified just make sure that the brother is not lying to you once that is settled the rest i mean god will just take care of the rest now um before i talk about a comment a very very important comment in on facebook i just want us to talk just a little bit more about the verification um, because there are people are, that are just like me. They want to know specifics about things. They want to know uh, things in terms of duration and in terms of time. When we are talking about verification, is there a, a, a average time frame that you should be looking at? Because, for example, bro, Yemi spoke about uh, you, you have a lot of time to really get to know the brother and... I'm sorry, some, some sisters or some marriages, um, they like to go with the speed of light, right? Some people have heard, <laughs> I've heard a sister say, me, if you're not getting married to me in six months, I beg, don't, don't, don't be wasting my time, <laughs> you know? So do we have, do we have like a general, um, duration time that, is kind of like enough for a sister to say, okay, I'm satisfied now with knowing enough about this brother. This is, to me, I don't know. So married people can answer this better. <laughs> oh, Jewish, uh, can... Go ahead, brother. Jimmy. No, no, it's just me. You can, you, you can please uh, I think that duration, uh, as we have said, and as um, Sister Princess has said, uh, duration is good, but what is really important, as you have said, is really that God has spoken to you. You are sure about what you, and then in, you can stay five years and not know the person. You can stay one year and, 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 and you know the person because he's a sincere Christian. You are a sincere Christian. Two sincere Christians coming together, they share about what they want, and then they are open to each other, open communication. They are open to each other. He, how much he has, how much you have, you know. If you're saying, if he's communicating this to you, you are saying, you're not just saying yes for saying yes, because you want her to just come into the net, okay? You know, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are really agreeing with her, you're going on to check on, okay, you want her to be comfortable. Okay, you, you want to ask even, do you like this place? As in, if it's a place that she can come there to see, do you like this place? Do you, do you, do, is, it okay, is it okay for you? Then, for example, I don't know, you, 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 let her come into a place that she's not comfortable with. I know that as ladies, when you come to when you come into a place, if as the man has got the place ready, that is always you're always going to bring in your touch. That is just that's a normal thing ladies are always going to do. She's only going to bring in her, her touch. But there are some basic things. There are some basic things that she will be communicating to you as a woman that she wants. 
Don't tell her that you have it and you don't have it. And you're saying that I'm talking out of faith. There are a lot of people, there is a lot of things that, like, there is a particular leader in the Parliament Bible Church that is talking on social media. And he has been saying about this talk of faith that you say, I'm, I'm, I'm well, or you say, I'm very buoyant. I look, in reality, you, you don't have anything. You're saying I'm buoyant. You're saying it's a positive statement, something, what, what, what. You're in marriage. You're, you're in courtship. You're talking with a sister you're going to get married. You say, I'm buoyant. I have. And you don't have. And you're saying that you, this is a, it's a talk of faith. What's a talk of faith? You're saying that you have something that you don't have. And this is a problem. I think even this thing of, I think there is a problem of culture too. Cultural of culture, culture has a way of of having effect on where people think. So it's people that are this cultural opinion that you see something is red, you see it's white. Because you feel saying that it is red is negativity, and you don't want to be attached to negativity. What is that? Tell her the truth. What it really is, it asks you how much can me. I think that if we have this amount of money, we'll be able to start at least from somewhere. And you say, I have it. Sister, she thinks you're a child of God, she believes you. Okay, so <laughs> so where's it coming you're... from? We believe you, and I think that a Christian to be a Christian. And, and, and then people sometimes, the truth is that even when you look at it very, very well, if we look at the Bible, and even in, in Christians that love Jesus, they have made mistakes. Do you know that? Christians that love Jesus, they have made mistakes. If Catherine Kuhlman that had the Holy Spirit of God made mistakes in a marriage, what would you tell me about? Christians that love Jesus, they make mistakes. Joshua, as he was a prophet of the Bible, he made mistakes. He made a mistake of going into a covenant relationship with people that came and they told lies to him. Yeah. So the possibility that you, you, the possibility that you as a lady, especially if you are this lady that think that I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, and I'm going to tell you the truth, and I expect you to tell me the truth. And the Bible says what? What does it say about love? It says love believes all things. And if you apply that thing, you believe all things, you believe your own heart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so I think if and if no, 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 nobody sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me let's let's there. be brief because yeah, I yeah, want yeah. us to dive into some things quickly. Yeah. So, so that the listeners can balance what Madam Deborah mm -hmm. said. Yeah, love believes all things, but the same Bible tells us about John. It tells us in 1 John 4, chapter 1, it says, Cry every spirit. And in Matthew 10, we tell God, uh, you need to uh, mute his mic. Okay. I said, just to balance what Madame Deborah said about uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe, 13, somewhere 4 to 6, somewhere there. The Lord believes all things. The same Bible tells us in 1 John 4 1, try all spirits. The same Bible tells us in Matthew 10 16, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. The same Bible tells us, even Apostle Paul is telling us that in the latter days, you know, the wolves were. So we have to balance all things. And that is what why what Sister Princess said is crucial. You can love Jesus, but you can still be foolish. <laughs> if you love Jesus, it's true. Uh, I brought up one of our previous uh, leaders in campus fellowship said this, and I think it was Pastor Adebue that said, he said, the Holy Spirit is fire, but also a comforter. He said, it will comfort you. When you be foolish, it will still comfort you. It's also a comforter. So in the, in the name of loving Jesus and believing all things, don't throw away your God-given wisdom that he also tells you to have. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is a principal thing. You know, you're getting, you get, you know, understanding. So it has to be balanced. So, you are David, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that covers it. Let's dive into something else that is a bit um, interesting. Now, our sister from Peace, um, from Abuja, Abia, sorry, her name is Peace. She said, if 
the brother is a sincere brother. They don't have accommodation. He's staying with someone. <laughs> He's hardworking brother. Just that he has not gotten a well-paid job and he wants to marry you. <laughs> what do you do? Okay, Brother David, I don't know if I can go first. Yeah, yes, please go first. Please go first. <laughs> so I think um, she's being sincere and she wants to know what to do. You know, there is no sentiment when it comes to marriage. You don't have to be sentimental about, about things. Yes, you have told me your plans, you have future. Yes, you want to be this and that. But we need to work it out before we get in. If you ask me, yes, you have gone to school, you are still maybe hanging around with your brother. Staying one year, two years more for him to sort himself out, I don't think that will be too much. I would not advise him to get married in an accommodation that uh, probably belongs to his brother or parents' house. It's very detrimental. I would not, I would not advise that. They should not be desperate. That same God that I've shown him that glorious future is also able to bring it to to pass in the shortest uh, period of time, maybe in the next one year or two years. I think waiting for the next two years to perfect all that needs to be perfected, uh, it's what's it when it comes to marriage. I have seen cases where somebody, you know, got married into the parents' house. You know, the influence from extended families eventually ruined that same marriage. So what you want to rush in, if you don't have the right foundation, you are still going to rush out of it. So it's better to spend a little bit of time, let him sort out himself. You are not rushing anywhere. The lady have told you, yes, yes, we are there. <laughs> Let me sort out myself then. We can you know, have a nice accommodation so that we can start building our family so i will not i will not subscribe to them she should be patient the brother should sort out himself thank you okay i, I love that i love that answer and I, and I, I would like to believe that every one of us on this panel agree with that answer right so then i want to have a twist to this <laughs> now imagine <laughs> this is interesting imagine that a, a brother is still trying to sort himself out and he has all the certificates just like she said but this is a twist to it and um sister sister is is doing very very well like she's she's bowling she's a medical doctor she has houses even and she has a house like you know a full three bedroom flat and she's like this brother is my bro i must marry him now, brother don't have, he doesn't have accommodation. Brother is struggling, bro. The brother is trying to figure out himself. <laughs> uh, should, should she still go ahead and marry this brother and see how <laughs> it goes? <laughs> because it has happened. I've seen it happen. So, what do you think? Sorry. Uh before before I go attend, so what is the end of the one you saw that happened? Was it nice? Did they later got things sorted out and did they enjoy oh. their marriage? Oh, you want to know about the story? Yeah, the one that you did. <laughs> Just summarize the end. You know, you know the end was nice. <laughs> the end was beautiful because she didn't okay. really care. She didn't really care that he didn't have well, all she wanted is i want the husband and i love this brother this brother brings me joy i don't mind to be the one that has the house i believe that so, in time he will sort himself out let me pick it up from there you see no but there but is... but sir i'm not giving that story just to make a, uh to allow us to discuss that story i'm talking about a sister now that is not yet married and she's a doctor now and she has everything it takes to actually take care of the family on her own right and she's considering this brother now see it from that point of view don't see it from the point of view of this marriage that is already done and they're already making it work right 
No, what? I'm not picking it from that. Um, look, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm picking it off from the stand view of uh, singles about to get married. Uh, I needed your your story to end so that I can I can also find uh, a balance to what I want to say because I importantly tell people that what should be crucial to you, although this topic is not directly on that, but it has a bit of connection to it. Now, what is very crucial to you when you want to marry is to be bent on doing the will of God. You have to be bent. That's my own view anyway. Because so many factors will mitigate and so many factors will uh, fight against doing the will of God. Such will be maybe accommodation is not good. Such will be maybe the, the lady has maybe some deformities. Such will be that maybe the family are not willing to release him or release her. And so many factors will come up. But since we are narrowing down to accommodation, so, but once you know the will of God, now you are very certain of doing the will of God, I think is very, very key. Well, I do not know if you have the mind, if, in mind to ask, but I was thinking that one of the questions you would have asked us at the beginning would be that what, how did we manage our own accommodation, especially those of us who are married? <laughs> because I, uh, <laughs> that will also give us a perspective. So, you see, uh, I try not to talk about my wife, especially in the public things like this, to leave her house. But the truth is that uh, since she believed that I was will of God for her, and I also believe that she, she was the will of God for myself. We didn't have problem. All that things started sorting themselves out. Uh, we, 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 our hearts were admitted to I told people that myself and my wife, we did what we call kochi. There was no area that we didn't go into. In fact, uh, sorry to say, but the truth was that there were times, like once or twice, that we wanted to part it pathways during the courtship, issues will come up that, that will, will be as it's as if we cannot continue together. So if at this level, but the fact was that we were just being sincere. We were not trying to push things to after marriage. So we wanted to trash everything. And uh, to, to the glory of God, I can say to a very large extent, everything that we needed to set to, we set to all I can say to a very, very large extent during the courtship. So now, accommodation, you know, will be one of those issues anyway. Uh -huh. So we, the accommodation was not a problem. The two of us already knew we were going to go in courtship and we had agreed, we have settled everything to marry. So uh, I could not personally sponsor the kind of accommodation we wanted, you understand? Uh -huh. I could not sponsor the kind of accommodation we wanted. So what she did was that she brought her own parts, even though we are not married, she brought her own part. We were almost getting married. We are almost getting married. She brought her own part to get the type that she preferred that we should get. You understand? Not that uh, we couldn't get something, but to look at it that from this level, okay, if we want, if this is what we want, and the only thing is that we are not married yet. After all, we're going to be married, so we will not stay in that place that we will not want because the money was not sufficient and all that. She brought in a, a part. We joined it together to get exactly what we wanted for, to start our marriage. And it was a comfortable one. We, we enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you stories of things in that. So what I'm saying is that if you are bent on doing the will of God, you will not. Go, you are not going to have issues and issues and issues. So I think that lady that you referenced to, because she felt that was the person she wanted. Maybe in a, in my own language, I would say that was the will of God for her life. Uh -huh. Let me use it that that way. Uh -huh. So she knew that that was the will of God for her life, and that was why she was ready to give everything together with her, even if the man was not up to state of her own level, she was able to give, get, get ready to give everything that will help the man to come in. So when you are ready to do the will of God, there's going to be give, there's going to be take. There are things that you are going to just look away from because you know that the will of God will not give you trouble. 
Yes, there will be challenges. I mean, there will be challenges. We have had issues and challenges in our marriage. Take, for example, when we got married, we tried, our child didn't come immediately. Now, that didn't mean my wife was not the will of God. But now we had three of them, and we maybe uh, Star Princess will advise if we should get more or not. But I think uh, we are done for now. So, what I'm saying is that. Those were the challenges that, and any time those challenges come from any one of them, we are able to go to God and say, God, you led us to this marriage. So if God didn't lead us, how will we have the confidence to go back to God and say, you led us to this marriage? Definitely, as you are saying, God, you led me to this marriage. Something will be telling you a liar. Don't call God into what he did not lead you to. But that hasn't been our own case. So I feel if you are, we want to do the will of God, accommodation as serious as we are, are presenting seeing it to be today shouldn't be the only yardstick that are going to use to decline or delay whatsoever your, your decision of that marriage will be. Because the truth is that even if the man is not able to present it, you can, I don't know, it's your choice. It was our own choice. I'm not saying it's a standard. I'm not saying it's a standard. You can't, you may not do that. And the, but the thing is that if that will be the issue. So far, you know that because what of if you marry someone that had to go to accommodation and at the end of everything, trouble starts in the home. Yes, nice accommodation, but you hate the home. But that's bad. So what I think we should do is that in as much as accommodation is very crucial, very important, but doing the will of God to me is the most important thing. Once you're doing the will of God, other things will start falling in place. It might take a year, it might take a 10, it may take 10 years, but the truth is that one way or the other, as you join hands together to pray together. Uh, there are times that, you know, myself and my wife, we pray on issues and the Lord will really answer on those very, very, very serious issues. Very serious issues, but one, because we, we, we were together, God led us into it, we challenge God based on that thing. It works out. So what I'm saying is that, please, let not accommodation uh, stop us from doing the will of God. That's my Thank solution. you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, this, we are really grateful for you <laughs> being open about even your situation. I'm sure a lot of people have learned from this, and and it's very important to hear this kind of stories because it's encouraging to people that might have similar scenarios, right? And it's a kind of reassuring um, message. I also want to go into a bit of 3D into this same scenario. Um, now, we still have not spoken about one component, which is very, very key in this whole conversation of accommodation, which is our marriage committee. And I'm talking about marriage committee specifically because now we are talking about the DLBC, right? The deeper life setting. Uh, of course, we still have different denomination, denomination amongst us, but I just want us to talk a bit about the marriage committee part of it. Now, in relation to this specific scenario, for example, uh, we, we, we said, we already said about the sister have the accommodation, the brother doesn't have, and both of them goes, go to the marriage committee. Marriage committee investigates and say, bro, you're not qualified. Sister says, no. I still want <laughs> to get married to this brother. And uh, they are saying, with the power invested in us, we cannot really approve you. What would you advise the sister and this brother to do? Let's are we get talking about a brother that doesn't have any accommodation at all? You are mute. Uh, no, I don't hear you. They're not hearing you at all. We cannot hear you at all. Are you muted? It looks like he's he's kind of frozen. Yeah. You have to log, maybe log out and log back in. What did you Okay, he has log he will log back in. So um 
you were Thank asking you. a question if if the brother didn't have any accommodation any accommodation or, at uh, all what was the situation? yes he does not have any accommodation at all well and a the brother sister, that and the uh, sister from the third accommodation for example okay. for those of us that are in the diaspora a lot of sisters come to africa they get led to brothers in africa and they are the ones that get the accommodation they are the ones because they're living abroad yes yes they welcome the brother into mm -hmm. their accommodation yes it, it, it's happening and the, the church on this part of the world is not going to say do not accommodate the, the do not welcome the brother into the house the house that you got yeah but that's an understanding that brother lives outside of the country he cannot yeah. even get an accommodation abroad right you are the one the woman that is in 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 the diaspora whatever country it is is the one that has the paperwork is the one that that's living there and she's the one going to marry him and to do family reunion even the state will not let her bring this brother to to the diaspora if she does not have an accommodation so that family reunion will not work if this lady does not have an accommodation. We have stories of many of our friends that the lady has to work two, three jobs so that she can have enough money to show to the country that she's able to accommodate this man that she's bringing so that he's not dependent on the state. We know that, right? So, and this lady already does that knowing fully well that i am the one that is going to accommodate this man at least until he settles in the country that he's going to and i expect that kind of woman to understand the 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 the, the um the the facts around this she's the one getting married to him she's i mean even if he's the one that proposed to her she's the one inviting him over and no, she should be she's able not to ready to go back to the old country as long as she's not ready to go back to the old country to be with him yeah but you might have an accommodation he, he may not he may not even have an accommodation in the old country in the he may or he may not no yes. now if she's ready to go back to live with him back in africa then the owner should be on the guy the brother to have an accommodation where he's going to accommodate the wife he's getting married to but if she's not ready to come back home but of course everybody will say no don't come back home there is there is better life out here i mean there are except if the brother is doing exponentially too well in africa and he can he's better off but if he's agreeing to come over to her then she should be able to to have an accommodation but the man should be ready to work so when you're getting married to such a man that doesn't have an accommodation and he believes that yes he's going to he's going to travel out with the woman the point is that you need to know what kind of man he is. Why did he not even have an accommodation back in Africa? In Why is he not place. even working? Why yes. does he not have a job? Why does he not yes. have a means of livelihood? Yes. So he Why is he squatting with his friends? Yes. So if he's not able and he's, he has lived until 36 years, 38 years, 40 years, and he has no accommodation, he is squatting with his friend. Just know that you are marrying a squatter. He's going to squat in your house and he's not going to work. Because when you ask him a question, why are you not working? And I, did not get, I did not get a job in 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 in, in NMPC or LLN, LNG. Hey. And there were no other jobs you could do. There was nothing you could know you, you can do around. Our mother used to say something. Money does not smell, right? Money does not smell. When you get your cash, does it smell? It doesn't smell. It doesn't matter what kind of job that you do, as long as you are willing to work. And if you are a graduate, you can turn. Whatever it is that women, even, even selling in the market, you can make it a graduate market selling with style just to show that you went to school. If men are ready to think, there is not, if you're not ashamed, let's take Nigeria for example. If a man is not ashamed eh, and is ready to work and he wants to work, he'll find something to do. I was talking with a lady recently. And she told me something. She said while she was trying to bring her children abroad, she made all of them to have a handwork. They were going to invest you. She was sending them to school. She made every one of them. One of them, she's a graduate. She took her sewing. She went to go and learn how to sew. And she can make hair. The other one, she's a graduate. She learned how to make decorations. She learned how to make hand things that you can do with your hand. 
just stuff, things that you can do that she can turn into money anywhere she goes in the world. Then the only son she has, she sent him to become a mechanic. Mechanic. His mother is in the abroad. Oh. They live in a good house. Oh. He will dress up in the morning and go to the shop and be subject to his master. Guess what? When she brought him here, I said, who is doing Coco in that garage? She said, with my son. He got a client, brought his car, and he's repairing the car of that guy. She said, you see me? All my jobs, this guy's one-hour job, pay, pay, collects for one-hour work. is more than my healthcare aid that I'm doing. I said, wow. But you're a very intelligent woman. Now, he, she's now trying to send him to a technical school here. But he already has the practical. He can repair a car. Is that boy not marriageable? He's marriageable. Very marriageable. Very but marriageable. some sisters are saying he's looking dirty. He's going under the car. Right? You're looking for the white collar brother. But this brother, <laughs> this young man already has... His brother, she said, oh, I am a graduate of accounting. What stops you from going to learn how to repair a car? If there is no job to do. Go on. You learn how to repair a car. Go and ask. Sometimes we think vulcanizers and all these people on the road, they are broke. They're not broke. Oh. That woman that is selling fish on the road, she's not broke. Some of them are not broke. If a woman is selling fish and she's able to send her children to the university, sweating, wearing that funny cap and doing as if she doesn't have anything, many of them, they pretend. But they're not broke. But graduates are sitting down there waiting for a bank job or LNG oil company, uh, this, uh, and you can do something in your neighborhood. So if he's there in the neighborhood, he did not do anything. He cannot tell you, oh, I actually tried to sell pure water. It didn't work out. I actually tried to, to fry meat pie. What was there? What's the problem in frying meat pie? If it will give you money, if it give you, if it will give you up to 30,000 Naira in a day. Oh, I don't know how much I would say it in dollars. If he can give you $500 in a day, what's there in selling meat pie? He, he can't tell you, I sold meat pie. I tried to learn how to make shoes. I tried to learn how to sew. Now, even men are good. Even men learn how to make hair. Hair is a beautiful business in this abroad. Eh? Because people will not stop making their hair and bobbing their hair, looking cool. So if a man can plait hair, please, let's not feminize anything. Eh? It's giving you daily bread. It doesn't take anything from your manhood. It takes nothing from your manhood. If you can plait woman's, woman's hair, some of these things that he was doing for the last 15 years since he graduated he has been squatting jumping from house to house that guy is a liability yo. liability what's going to happen he is a liability that's just the truth right. I'm just so, telling you guys the truth this is just the truth this is how me I would me as a oh, he's, yeah, oh, he's so squatting much. in his father's house he's squatting in his father's ah, house that's the worst he's that's squatting in his father's boy. house father's boy. he's 33 years old He's squatting in his father's house with his friend and he yeah. wakes up early in the morning to go and buy anything to go and buy a sachet of milk. Look, and then wait he wait wants wait to wait if your wait father wait. if your father has houses that he uh, he can let you rent, eh? And you can get a, a, a two rooms out of your father's house, my friends. Me, I would not be against a brother that is in his father's house, but he has a huge savings. Mm. If he stands up today, he can rent a house. Because yeah. he was saving his money. There is an empty house in my father's house. I will not go and give my 1.5 million, let's talk in Naira now, or Sefa, to the, the other guy over there. I can have a truce with my dad and say, Daddy, I'm going to give you 400,000. Let me live here. I will help you around the house, cut the grass, do one or two things. But let me live with you. You are old. M many of these fathers are old. You stay with the elderly papa. You have, maybe his wife is late or his wife is still alive and they're all both elderly and you help him around the house and you give him something and you're saving the other portion of your, your money. You're industrious. So the, the, not, the nutshell here is industrious. Let that man be industrious. It's not about how, what he has. Mm. What is he doing? What was he doing before? You are taking him abroad. If the only get abroad, he say it's cold though. He wouldn't go out. I know it's not about that brother now that the mother wanted to dash me to marry. <laughs> <laughs> Where was he? In the abroad, in that France, he was living in his mother's house. Every night, he has a room to himself. The old aged mother was accommodating him. This guy will watch TV the whole night. Once five o'clock, cock has crow. That boy has gone under his blanket to cover. When we are all dressing up and running out, he's now covering himself. He will sleep till one o'clock. 
<laughs> when he wakes up in one o'clock, you go and look for food, whatever his mother has. In the morning, what is in the kitchen? He'll eat something. Then when he's oh, fast, when you guys are coming back home, he's walking to the stadium to go and see what's happening. He's mm-hmm. greeting everybody. Mm-hmm. Bonjour, bonjour, hey, bonjour, hey, bonjour. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's going out at five o'clock. The mother said, Hey, I saw you are very industrious, my daughter. If you marry this, my son, his life will change. I say, Me, my wife, I go for big bad thing. My <laughs> ability, I will not carry a yoke. Huh? Okay, husband. She almost attached me to the boy. I ran to 440. I ran away from my house. I stopped living with her. Because you cannot be yoked to somebody that's going to be a liability for the rest. You have seen him doing it already in his mother's house. The mother is carrying him. The cross was heavy for her. She's giving you the cross. You want to carry it because he's living abroad. I don't know if that boy has married though. But I will never advise any woman to marry that kind of boy. He's going to be, you will carry him and carry your children. And those kind of men, they can give birth to children because they cannot be responsible for them. <laughs> <laughs> they will just be busy and they will tell you you cannot you cannot do anything you know my mother needs more children for her family and you just be you will become a, a, a hen and just be giving back be produce be popping them every year he has no job he has to be busy somewhat <laughs> sorry sorry I, I want to emphasize on one point you just made I, I missed a lot of the things you said because i had some computer problems uh there's one point you made about the the brother staying in his family house you know i've lived with different communities and i've noticed some trends in some cultures right there are some communities that they believe in um family wealth right they will rather stay in a in the same area of accommodation and build well together save money and before you know it this uh the immediate family has a house the other one has a house and that's how they build wealth like they like to stay together to minimize costs and bring money and grow their wealth so now um there might be some sisters that <laughs> happen to <laughs> to get to uh, be um considering marriage with this type of culture and it might be a shock to you like when you when for example you you say you want to investigate to get to know a bit more about this brother and then you <laughs> the brother is <laughs> you you kind of like get to find out that he is living with a large family it's it might be a very shocking thing and it might be very confusing to a lot of sisters and you will see this brother thinking that he is a pauper but he's not <laughs> he's not a pauper he's actually they are very very wealthy uh, I've seen it played out in, let me, let me just say it. I've seen it played out with the Indians. The, the Indians, Pakistan, yes. The they do it here even. They, they do it a lot. So you might think that they are poor, but they are not. Mm-hmm. They own a lot of things, <laughs> right? So I'm just saying this because, sister, sometimes it's not what you see on the surface that it is really what's happening. There are some things behind the scene that you don't know about. So if you're marrying into a culture that is quite different from you, don't use your preconceived ideas hmm. or preconceived knowledge about how family life is and you start bringing it and projecting it over into this new culture. It doesn't work the same for every type of culture, right? So um, that's just why I just wanted to chip in. <laughs> To Sorry, that point. let me let me add something quickly uh so anybody that is getting married into the indian families they should know that when you get married to an indian uh the man must have his parents living with him so okay so because we are deeper life deeper life is everywhere right robina knows this the man's parents aged parents must live with him that's one side so get ready for that number two the indians are fond of at least in canada here that's what they do Many Indians are mortgage-free. They don't owe the bank nothing. Why? Because three Indian families will buy a house with three bedrooms. Husband and wife, each couple has a bedroom to themselves. But that house belongs to one of them. So all of them will be working full-time and be paying big time into the house. Once the house is fully paid, the three of them will go again and buy another house three bedrooms, all two people will leave that home and move into that new house, okay? 
and they have bought a house in, in the name of another of the, one of those two people that has moved, then they will get one third person to stay with them, one third family to stay with them, and then they will keep paying into that house. And that's how they go and go and go and go and pay off all those homes. But you have to have tolerance to live like that. Because everybody shared the same kitchen. This everything is together. Hey, I don't know if I can do it all, but and I don't know. But if you are going to go into that kind of marriage, just have that open mind that that's what it is. By the end of the day, you are mortgage free in a very short while, maybe five years or six years. You guys have paid off your house. Big, big house, big, big mansions. Probably now you know now. You know how they live. So, and that's how it is. So if you need to have an open mind to understand that these are just cultural, but that is not tantamount to laziness and that's not tantamount exactly. to have not having an accommodation because these people they have mm -hmm. an accommodation but that is the plan that they have in place okay so that's just what i wanted to add well while, while, while you also have to <laughs> if you are the type of person that you you believe in family can come and stay in my house and all those things there are some cultures <laughs> That is a big, big no. Yes, <laughs> they're not really. going to let. They're, they're not going to agree. Like yeah. I'm saying from the man side, they're not going to agree that uh, your 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 mom is coming to stay with us for two months, three months. Nah, it's not happening. <laughs> they, I don't want to mention some some of those cultures, but you should Why do your not? research. No, basically. Why don't you want to mention it? We'll mention it. It's good to mention. Okay, it. okay. For example, uh, in the West, it's, it's very common. Yes, like, in the West, in Europe. In the West, in Europe. It, my sister, if you think that you're not going to bring your, your brothers or your, <laughs> your, your, your parents into your that clan. home, it's I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. They yeah. are very particular about their privacy, right? And I've seen scenarios where even uh, same family, the son will send away his, his parents out of the house because he just wants to be have his own privacy, right? So, and if you if you are looking at it from your own preconceived ideas about culture, you'll be like, oh, how can he do that as his parents as? His... But I'm sorry, every culture is different. You just need to understand the culture which you're getting married into. And um, it's very important we are talking about this because trust me, now cultural marriages is very common. Uh, multicultural marriages, right? And you should be able to know those things regardless of whether you are the most religious person, you are the most sp spiritual uh, human being in the church. Culture still plays a very big part in accommodation, right? So I think we've covered a lot today. I'm not sure if we still have anything else we want to chip in. Yeah, if you uh, have examples, I want to hear examples of people. And Brian has shared his own. Brian Femi, I believe, has a lot in his pocket. Can you share with okay. us examples of people who, um, about accommodation? I want to be, I will be happy to, 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 <laughs> to hear okay all right um thank you sister princess i think we should change this program to strict conversation <laughs> because uh we are just saying it raw you know we are not trying to pamper the issues and that's exactly what it is people may not want to hear the reality but all that has been said here is just what it is you cannot uh, replace hard work. You understand? With whether you can't hide under the umbrella of culture. This is how we do it, and then you know, hard work. It's it's it stays on its own tripod. It's not you can't mix them up. If you're hard working, you're hard working, irrespective of the culture. Whether Indian, Nigeria, it's the same. It's, it's a universal principle. Even people that are unbelievers. Once they are hard working, they are getting things done. It's a principle of success. Planning, hard work, you know, integrity, and just do what is right. That's what we get the thing done. So my own experience of um, accommodation, I think when I went for my youth service, then Deeper Life Corpus Fellowship, one of the pastor's friends got married and eventually no accommodation. So he's courted with another pastor's friend. So most of the time, if we go visiting, you see the, the pastor's wife. And funny enough, the other pastor that accommodated them was still single. 
So the the lady was not free. You understand? I saw this, you know, whenever anybody comes in, she will quickly pack herself and arrange herself. So that privacy is not there. So I begin to ask questions that, ah, why is this? This man give this woman the the privacy that she she so desired. You know, I saw this. I also saw another example. So that's like, you know, it's it's shaping the way my own marriage uh, would actually look like. And I'm sure uh, Sister Deborah, we are close. She can attest to what I'm saying. You know, I was one of the privileged ones. You know, I finished, I, I got a very, you know, good job. So my accommodation has even been ready three years before marriage. Sets everything. I think, uh, let me just say minimum standard. <laughs> Don't let me overhype it. At least what a sister would want to see. I do accommodate. Yes, everything is there. And I can tell you, um, the first night my wife came in, she knelt down and said, wow. She was just saying, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so that means she was happy with what, what she saw. So it's, I prepared, you understand? Well, it may not work for every person. As I said, I was part of the few very privileged, you know, three years accommodation is even is out of it everything because i worked outside Lagos, so um i was even paying rent i was not staying there you know i yes. happen to be sites sites man you know i go for some engineering job so i don't think i have such a uh, problem everything was 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 set and i saw the joy the lady was you know my wife was happy that the was story may not yes she, she so the, the story yeah, the story yeah. may not be like that for everyone, but probably because of the experience of this pastor friend that I saw, I said, no, I don't want to put, you know, the, my wife to be in this kind of um, scenario. She needed her privacy. So whenever we come in, you see her, she's not free. I said, no, 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 I can't. I don't think I would want to go through this route. And as I wished in my mind, God also helped me, and so it was. So for me, I don't have any issue with accommodation. I was. I'm sorry. Aunt. I want to ask one. I want to ask one question. Um, yeah. Uh, is, is the sister she didn't know about your accommodation, correct? No, she knows about it. This, but so she didn't. She, she didn't. She, she didn't know. You know what was in the amenities and all that. No, but she knows I have accommodation. I'm fine. Okay. But she exactly. was surprised with, with something she saw. You understand? Like the <laughs> arrangement. <laughs> Maybe he had a cooker, wash, uh -huh, washing something. machine. Everything. Yeah, it's just Water. everything. Name it. Name it. Name Vacuum it, cleaner. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, you know, she, she was just surprised. Ah, even no, me, I think that. I think that. Cooking utensils, everything. She saw it's everything. For me, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's consideration. C'est à dire que. Yeah. I have you. It's for me, I think that when you don't have regard for the other person, you, you, you don't you, you don't plan for that person. And God plans. Why do you take somebody into something that is not good for the person? I just say you have to accept it like that if you want to prove that you love me and you want to do the will of God. No. It's consideration so I, I, for me. I think sister sister Deborah is very correct. It's, it's consideration um purely. It's consideration me, and respect. Yes. It's consideration and respect. Yeah. You respect this person, yeah. Even if you, she's going to be your wife, you should respect her. You should honor her. You you know that, oh, let her be comfortable. Let, let her have, and then she describes to you in courtship what she's what is she looking out for. And I don't think that the deeper life Bible church single sisters that are that are very considerate are actually looking for something. They're looking for no, they're, they're looking no, for yeah. just minimal things but some of these brothers they, they are not considerate at all they don't even want to prepare the minimal things at all they don't even want to prepare the minimal things at all then after when the lady comes in she discovers she's not satisfied then she goes into she goes into bitterness and and, and, and unhappiness because what you are presenting to her is not comfortable you are saying it's comfortable for you it's comfortable but for her, it's not comfortable what if we ask brothers to start taking pictures? If, if uh, oh, I mean, really, Pastor has even said that people can go and visit. 
a brother, yeah. his two sisters can go and visit. And now it's not about the number of rooms, okay? Bro, Femi might have everything, dishwasher, um, um, washing machine, dryer, uh, vacuum cleaner, and everything, and what have you, three bedrooms, okay? Some other brothers, you don't need to have that much. You, you, you may not have three bedrooms, but if you have one bedroom and a living room, okay, you should be able to openly and sincerely tell the sister that I have one bedroom and a yeah. living room. So in my bedroom, for example, me, I told my husband, I want to have a TV in my living room. You know, in those days, my husband is part of those class of people that used to believe that the devil box and all that thing before, you know, things changed. Hmm? So I told him one thing. I love to have a TV in my living room. I love to have a nice living room that people can come into and I'm not ashamed of, right? And a good bed. At the beginning of your marriage, you don't have to have three bedrooms where um, all the family members can come and visit you. Especially, you know, when you're just starting, if you don't have so much. But the basic things... She mustn't go and be bathing and be sharing bathrooms with other yeah, people, sense. you know. Somehow, there are there are self contains that you you can have a bedroom and a parlor oh, and a kitchen. I, I, I want to shake tables more. Now, I like to think that in uh, you, all these things you are saying, brother uh, Femi, brother Yemi said his own. Everybody said a lot of things. Sister Debbie said. All those things. Now, for me, I just believe that in this our generation of TikTok, Instagram, a lot of nonsense has entered sister's head, head, right? And they have these unreasonable expectations, and they they tend to pretend a lot. They tend to pretend a lot just to achieve what they are trying to get, which is comfort, right? But for me, I believe that there are some brothers I know. <laughs> I know some brothers that have done this, and it has worked for them. They play the opposite card of of presenting, presenting that comfortable life, right? They play the opposite card just to find out, like, oh, is this sister for real, or she's she's just playing an act? And um, you find out that a lot of sisters will. We we'll, we'll really fall off the wagon because of that. Yeah. You know, if they see you that you are in a one one room apartment, oh my God, they'll be like, this brother is he's still trying to figure out his life. Let him go and find a sister that uh, that fits his 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 his, uh, his face. They 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 put it that way. His face. Me, I've passed that phase though. You know. <laughs> well. I, I, I'm sorry to say there are some brothers that they purposely, purposely, they will plan it very well and make sure they have this. Of course, it, they will have a room, but they will have the very bare minimum, exactly that picture that Sister David posted on the group, exactly that setting, just to test your tolerance level because uh, a lot of us, me included i believe that life happens in cycles right sometimes you're up sometimes you're down sometimes you're up sometimes you're down what if you marry somebody that when you are in your dying, down cycle she, she she feels like wow well, what is what is happening right and if you are not with a sister that is able to be with you for who you are and believes in your leadership believes in your hard work i mean what was the point of the marriage in the first place that's my opinion i don't know <laughs> what you thought about that so i i don't know if because i have another practical example to that so for me um once you are in discussion with anyone be it sister be it brother the intention of the mind, the thoughts in the mind, it will be unraveled. If the sister is materialistic, you mm. will know. There is no, no pretense about it. Mm. So, um, yes, playing the opposite card. Why do you have to do that at the first instance? Probably you don't trust 
you know, the sister. You are, maybe the sister is neither here or there. Mm. But if it is a sister that you trust, she's spiritual, she's not materialist, I don't think you need to do that. Now, let me give you an instance. Uh, this one happens to a very close brother of mine. You know, this sister happens to finish from Unilag, had a PhD, doing very well. My brother was working in PhD, and that, that was Nepa, you know, in Nigeria. But uh, after a few months, like six months, he got a job in LNG. That's oil company in Nigeria. So in fact, he had a very nice car. So he had, you know, gone to the marriage committee, and he has been permitted to go and propose to the sister. You understand? He didn't go to the university with the vehicle. The sister was, I think, lecturing, or maybe in part five, I can't really remember. So he went there barefooted, you know, dressed normally and started to propose. But the question that the sister was posing to this brother shows that she's materialistic. How much is your salary? And what are you doing now? You don't have any vehicle, you don't. You know, he has not even played the opposite card yet. But the question is suggestive. If you're asking a brother, where's your car? Where's your this? I think that should not even be the first thing. I would have expected that. I would say, okay, you have gone to the marriage committee. Let me probably pray about it. Yes, I'm not so sure if you have got through yet. Let me, mm. there is nothing like, let me go and pray about it. So the mm. question the sister was asking this brother was just physical. What do you have? How much is your salary? Are you sure you can take care of me? So I don't think you need a suit here to tell you that this lady is just after what you have. So if you are true to yourself, you don't even need to play any card. From the questions, from the interaction, and of course, uh, with the spirit of God, you can tell if this person would stay with you in your thick and thin. So um, that that's just okay. it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me give you an out. instance. Let me okay. let me give you an instance. What about the other the other scenario? Obviously, that that is that is uh, that is ready and has accepted the proposal of the brother. And the brother says that this is how much I am. But the sister expects that. Okay, so then the sister asks the brother, "How much do you have as savings?" The brother it's approximately how much he has a savings. She looks at it and she knows that that savings that that brother says he has cannot do anything, cannot even do their wedding ceremony, okay? Now she says that, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not, me, I'm, I believe that if I come into your life, your life is going to get better. I believe that I'm favor personified. That I come into your life, your life is going to get better. But what I want is that for us to start, do you have $2,000. Can you get $2,000? Now, and this, then the brother says, and that, okay, uh, I would like you to, because the sister is not around in the country, I would like you to join me, but I would like, like you have to pay your, your school fees. I will not pay your school fees for you. Okay? You want to come as a student. I will not pay your school fees for you. You will have to pay your school fees. Is it possible? Would you be able to get the money to pay your school fees? That's number one. Number two, apart from paying your school fees, would you be able to get a minimum of this amount of money for us to be able to start our lives together? I'm ready to start with you. I'm ready to even pay half of your, half of the accommodation that we're going to get. I'm ready to start with you. I'm not thinking about how much you have. I'm ready to start with you. But you have this minimum. And the brother says, I have the minimum. Mm. And just because the sister does not say, show me the thing in your account. The brother says he has it and he does not have it. And the sister believes, okay, you have it. Okay, you really have it? Okay. If that's the case, if you have it, then we can start. We can start on the minimum that you have. And we'll be able to find our way through. I know that we'll be able to find our way through. And it's on that basis that the sister comes into marriage relationship with that, that brother. How do you describe? Will you say that that sister is materialistic? Hmm. Hmm. The sister knows that the brother doesn't have a house. He does not, he does not have a car. 
or something. She's not even asking him for a car, by the way. She knows that they will be able to get a car. No. After. So, Sister Deborah, I think this, this, this is a different perspective you are bringing in. You have the conversation already. This is what I have. This is the plans I have. So, we can't say that that sister is materialistic. No, because you already opened everything bare. So, you understand? You've, you've laid it bare on the table. This is our plan. This is, if you come over, this is what we intend to do. But this is the cost implication. Of course, um, every good thing would definitely attract financial implications. So mm. I would not say that sister is materialistic, no. Yeah. But what I'm saying, they, you know, you, there is nothing, it's, it's not as if the sister and the brother, once they get married, they want to relocate. Both of them will still be here. So the, 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 the question from the sister to this brother is on the premise that, we are in Nigeria, but how much are you earning? Are you sure you can really take care of me? But the one you are saying now, I think is a different um, twist because you've already laid it bare. Yes, I am there in diaspora. You want to come over. This should be the minimum because if you are taking care of yourself abroad, it's different from when you are bringing another person to join you. So it becomes, um, you know, two persons responsibility. So of course, you need more money to take care of yourself. Probably it needs to do some certifications when it gets there, even before you can, you know, get a good job. It's it attracts money. So you yeah, need so to that, talk about the finances. Yes. Yeah, plan, yes. And you to months before yes. you can get a job and yes. to be able to rely on whatever you have. The, so you are no, that sister is not materialistic. No, I think it's a different <laughs> twist. Yeah. Okay. Robina, shoot. <laughs> Uh, in this kind of discussions, I purposefully keep before I'm sitting in the box. You know, when I tell people these things, they think, what do you know? Let me give one practical example. I had a, let's call her colleague. She, well, she doesn't have tech. She doesn't have tech. Can you still hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay. So what, what happened was that she was in a relationship with him. <laughs> so one day, I saw her coming to my space in the office. <laughs> it looks as if she had, she, had, she had been crying. I think, I don't know if the word, no, the weather was cold, but of course, this side wasn't cold. But she was shaking. I gave her my, what's called, jacket to put on. So I, I was asking her, what's going on? She gave this long story about the long distance relationship she was having with one guy in Nigeria, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, given the kind of person I am, I say things the way I feel. I tell her, I say, so this guy, if this guy tells you to jump from this building, will you be able to jump from the building knowing that the guy will catch you? She kept quiet. Sorry, stop hitting the table. Okay, sorry. She kept, she kept quiet. I told her, if you can't, if, if you can't answer this question, then my hand is not there. I have, I have nothing else to tell you. But all things being equal, she eventually got into another relationship and they got married. But before the marriage, because the guy had to come from abroad, they knew me, can you give me this amount of money to at least put in my account to show the government? I had the money. I said, okay, I will give you. I gave, I gave it to her. She used it for that thing, and eventually they are married now, they have a child. All I'm saying is this all these different examples that we've used, they have a common thing. The common thing is this, and we've, we've hit it before. If the spiritual is not, if there's no spiritual back, uh, um, on the uh, foundation, every other thing will fall. The example Madame Deborah was given if the man, how would I put this now? If the man cannot even say how likely they be upfront in that kind of serious situation, number one, the man has no honor to start with. That. In the so all this is worse because again, because we are talking, we are discussing this from the Christian perspective. All these problems, these issues, they stem from the fact that sadly these days there are many people in the church that only God knows the state of their heart. That is the, that is where this problem can start from. And what uh, the David was saying, it is true. Even Sister Princess knows there are some people in church. Yes, they might be born again, 
But where their mind is at, for example, if it's the sisters, where their mind is at, as a brother that is truly, genuinely trying to serve you, if you marry those people, where their minds are, your, your family will have problems from the start. She knows there are some relationships I did not enter into because I already saw where it's headed. Sadly to say, even so, this question about accommodation and some of the things, we've, we've given the examples. At times, the problem is from the brother's side, at times, the problem is from the sister's side. But if both parties are sincere, they are humble, they are sitting in the space trying to see how this thing can work. It will work. The problem is this. Either one of one person is trying to go one, you know, one for me, the other person is the victim. That's the way I see this thing. So my own contribution after all the said and done is this. I agree with what this person said. I've seen this thing practical. And I guess this is where the this is where the ladies, the sisters, have the upper hand. As a woman, I believe this with all my heart. Because I've seen it happen. If you can drop close to God, seriously drop close to God, even if that brother packages himself like a president or prime minister of the country, God will already show you that this man is a business person. So even if he's trying to sell you dream, Jaffa or whatever, you already know your answer is to me. That's from that, from that side. Now, from the side of the brother, because we're talking about communication, from the side of the brother, I also believe if the brother is close to God and says, you know, and says, this is what I have, this is the situation, the brother should also be, how I put it, have enough conviction. If there is anything the brother's, like the example um, your family was giving, if, like he said, if you already see the signs that this person is materialistic or something, from the get go, just forget it. You know, even if you have, your, heart, your heart needs to be broken. You know, for some guys, your heart needs to be broken. Even if your heart needs to be broken, let it be broken. You can mend it and you know continue your life later. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I think we've had everything that uh, everybody has said. And if you're tuning in from um, anywhere, maybe Africa, Europe, Middle East, wherever you're tuning in from, you must have identified with one of the things we've talked about. And I'm sure you've gathered a bit of more wider uh, knowledge about making a decision based on accommodation or not, right? And what are the things, the pitfalls you need to look for before you get married uh, in terms of accommodation. There are so many things we can talk about again, right? But I think we've said enough at the end of the day is you and your marriage right you have to be very very diligent about being intentional and knowing the will of god in marriage really having that relationship with god first and doing your due diligence because no matter what we say here if you don't do what is right it's you that will face the music <laughs> your pastor is not going to help you out when you're having issues your family members whoever is closest to you or whoever you listen to will not be able to help you when you start uh, facing those things that you could have averted right so that's why it is very important that we are coming out very raw some of these things cannot be discussed in church because uh, that is the pulpit uh, muscle right um but that's why you should always share what we, sh we 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 talk about here make sure you are always here on saturday because we are going to be bringing more guests like brother femi brother yemi brother obina and some others right that will be talking about raw topic we don't like to sugarcoat things here okay we like to say it how it is and if this session blessed you Please share it with somebody else out there because they might need to hear this, right? A lot of people, this is their opportunity to actually get to know some other areas of life. A lot of us here, we have experienced different, different phases of life and it's good that we are here talking about it because me personally, I've learned a lot from our married people here and even 
our my my dear single brother here. <laughs> so <laughs> so every and Saturday, you. every Saturday, I learn a lot. Okay, so thank you so much, brother Femi, brother Yemi. Couldn't stay longer. We just want to say we appreciate you because it's it's not easy to carve out time out of your family to come and be with us here. But we really appreciate your presence. We appreciate your wisdom. We appreciate your experience, right? Robina, we know uh, you have a busy schedule. <laughs> so we really like that you're here. And of course, our admins, you know, they're always doing a very good job. A lot of people don't understand the, the amount of effort behind putting all of these things together. But at the same time, that's the mission right to god be the glory so i just want to say i'm really grateful to have gotten this opportunity to moderate this session today and with no further ado i just want to give it on to maybe our admin to say a few things before we close out thank you okay thank, thank you, you so much go ahead Thank you very much for this time. I really appreciate you, uh, Brother Femi, for coming and for your participation. I appreciate Brother Obina and Brother Yemi too. And also, also the admin members that came around and discussed this topic for me is very important. And I think that we have really touched a lot and we have talked a lot. And I believe that a lot of people have learned as David said, I learn a lot on this group and I'm always learning and I'm open to learning. I, I want to learn. And I don't even think that people that are younger uh, cannot uh, um, um, bring in their own uh, part of it, you know. So I listen. And as one of the admins say, the other admins too. I listen to all that you have to say. And I I just want everyone to get it right. I really want all the singles on this platform to get it right. And that on your wedding day, when you're dancing and you're singing, you're really, really happy. You're not pretending to dance and pretending to sing, but you're really, really happy. And that when you get into that home, you would be very happy as a sister and as a brother of the person that you have married and no one is going to be coming into your home to counsel you. You will not need to go out looking for any counsel or reporting because of anything. Because you have ironed out and all that you needed to iron out and you are now moving together. Just like Brother Yemi told us, he said that when they have crucial things, because they know that this is the will of God for them, they can sit down together, they can pray, and God will come, always come through. In all the marriages, there are always challenges. But when you are sure that God is in this marriage, it's not a marriage that was laid on any shaky foundation, any lies, any deception, any trick, any of all of this. is a marriage laid on God. You can always go back to the master planner of your life, and the head of our womb, which is Jesus Christ, you can table all your problems to him and he will always, he will always see you through. And when Jesus is in a home and is the head of your home, there's always going to be peace. Bible says he was sleeping in that storm. The boat did not capsize. He could come into the storm when they went to wake him up. He came into that storm and he asked the storm, he says, peace be still. And there was peace in that storm. So when even storms, challenges of life, not challenges that you created yourself, but challenges of life comes into your marriage, you can always go to the master of the storm and you can ask him to come and speak, speak peace to the storm of your marriage. And he will always come and give you peace. And it's only when there are storms and you have asked him to come in, 
that when he comes in and he speaks peace, then it becomes testimony. When there are no problems, you cannot share testimonies. Only when we have problems can we share testimonies. So I'm inviting you all to the master of the storm. The master, the, the master, the one that instituted marriage, that you should commit him, commit your life to him. And once he's in it, you would not have problems at all. And even, even if you have challenges, because there's no life that doesn't have challenges, you will see your truth. That's what I will say. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you, Bra Femi, for coming here. I'm so happy for your contribution. It was insightful. God bless you so much. And may we always find you happy and <laughs> in your home. And when next we call you again, we hope that you would um, be happy to join us again and you will give us more testimonies of what God is doing for you as a family, as a home. God bless your wife too. Amen. And God bless your family. And Amen. I thank Brayami who has not who has had to leave. God bless you. God bless your beautiful wife and God bless your home. And for all his effort, Brayami has been a great uh, deal of effort for the prayer session. God bless him abundantly. And I pray that God continue to support him his wife is a very gentle sister. I know her. I pray that the Lord will continue to help them together. They will team up together and their home will always be blessed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Bra Obina, for your time. Always ready to help us in season and out of season when you have the time. I pray for you. God will give you a beautiful, godly wife. That's my expectation. And I'll be at that wedding dancing. You know, right? I'll be there to dance and to yeah, rejoice with you. I can imagine you joking. I'm telling you, I've been waiting for it to happen because you are one of our senior bachelors now. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And God will give this doctor a beautiful, godly Christian wife. That's what he wants. He just wants a godly wife. He can cook. He's a very good cook. And I pray that God will answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. And I pray for Mr. David too. Hi, it's another senior bachelor. God will bless you for your technical support, for your help, and for your gentleness. <laughs> always helping, always willing to support us on this DLPC journey. And uh, God will give you a good wife too. Mommy is waiting. Our mom has been waiting for a good wife and God will give you a good wife that will give you peace. I know you want peace. God will give you a peaceful woman, not a materialistic woman and um, one that is willing, that is not coming for anything that she can gain, but is just coming to build a home with you. And God will bless every one of us, Sister Debbie. God bless your family. God bless your home, all your challenges, all your hard desires. God will meet you at the point of your needs. Even whatever you don't say, that God knows and God sees. I pray that God will um, bless you mightily and settle you on every side. And you will always be here to help uh, to help us and to also give testimony. And give your big sisterly advice as you always come here and draw your ears. Warn all of them as a big sister that you are. I pray that some people will pick something from this your effort, this your fiery desire and will to help everyone to marry right. They may not understand, but I pray that no many people will not get into marriage and say, ah, that sister used to say it too. But they will take heed to what you have been saying and shouting and yelling at the rooftop. And they will pay attention to it so that they don't make a mistake in their marriage. My own heart desires to have testimonies. There have been many marriages from this group. Some have come to tell us, yes, I found my wife on the group, but I don't want to share. Yes, I know some of you are getting married from this group. This group is going to stand, this channel, group, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere that we are. We're here to only help people talk about those things that they don't talk about in church. Okay? But that is happening in homes. We want everybody to have a, an answer of peace, a happy home, a peaceful home, a joyful home. And that's not a home without challenges. Yes, as Sister Debbie has said, there, there might be challenges. But when you go with it with Jesus, your marriage will be blessed. God bless every one of you for staying on to the end of this live. I can see many of you guys, fulfillment, fair, uh, um, many people at Inuke, all of you guys. I see so many of you. That was the questions that were asked. We're going to answer that question because it was not so related to the topic so that's why we didn't jump into it but we'll answer your question god bless you all and remember that we're always here on saturdays if nothing happens no program in church we're always here and our prayer is 
on the first Saturday, on the first Friday of every month. We've been praying. We've been doing this for almost two years, and I think that has been our support system. God bless you, and thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to end the live stream now. Please remember to share to all your friends and all your loved ones so that they can also benefit from this. It's going to be on the page. If you have not followed our page, many people on the group are wondering, oh, send the link. It's because you have not followed the page. Follow the page so that you can know when we come live. God bless you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll upload this video in snippets on the YouTube channel. Subscribe and you'll be able to watch it again. God bless you. Have a good Saturday and a long weekend for all my Canadian friends. We have a long weekend. Have fun. Bye. <laughs>